Hey. Um, so when I walked up here, I factored in time to get my laptop plugged in and switched on and booted up and everything. I didn't factor in time of how long it's gonna take to get this mic on. Um, so I'm running a bit behind. But uh, while my laptop's booting up and I get the slides going, um, this talk is aimed at freelancers, but it's not freelancer specific. So if you are a freelancer, I think you can benefit from this. If you're thinking about becoming a freelancer, I think you can benefit from this. But there are some things that you could benefit from even if you work for an agency or you work remotely. Um, this is not specifically freelancer content. I just happen to be a freelancer and I believe you talk about what you know. My slide is titled, Don't Panic, A Developer's Guide to Freelancing. Um, the talk is not about not panicking. I just like uh, Douglas Adams' uh, books and, and movies, so I've stolen that straight out of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, a little background about myself. Um, I've been an open source developer for about 15 years now. I'm a husband and father of two. Uh, I'm a business co-owner co with my wife and a freelance developer at the same time. I'm also a WordPress community deputy, meetup organizer, and WordCamp organizer. And you can find me online at jonathanbossinger.com or at Twitter, john underscore bossinger. Um, I'd like to start with a little bit of an admission. I hate the word freelancer. I hate it. And the reason I hate it is because whenever I meet a new client, they usually tell me about the previous freelancer who didn't deliver the project on time or correctly or didn't finish the project or was unreliable or was unresponsive and had a take the money and run attitude. Okay? Some of you are smiling about that because you get it. Right? Um, these, these slides will be online so you can see them later. There's nothing really special there. It's just my notes, really. Um, and we always have sort of the, the angry client situation, and the client is the problem. And the client, whenever you talk to these freelancers that took the money and run, it's always, oh, the client was this, and the client was a scope creeper, and the client was unresponsive, and the client didn't give me the information I need. I'm going to make a statement, which is my opinion, but might be a bit, don't worry about it, might be a bit um, controversial. I believe. There are no such things as bad clients. Only bad freelancers who don't manage their clients' specific expectations. Okay? So, let's talk about a timeline of my bad clients. I left agency work at the end of 2015. I started working as a freelancer. Uh, it's not, that's not going to work because it's Ubuntu. Um, by July 2016, I was burnt out and ready to give up on this whole freelancing thing. Okay? And I actually wrote a blog post on it. You can go onto my website and you can, Google, you can search on my website, Remembering Why. And it was the day after I had been up working until 2 in the morning, killing myself to get something done because I had failed, not because the clients had failed. And that's when I realized it. That's when I had this epiphany. In September 26th, I joined a company called Codable. They're, an, they're a European-based country, a freelancer platform where they bring in clients and you work with those clients. They're similar to freelancer and Upwork. And I say similar, they're not the same. And the reason they're not the same is because they teach their, what we call experts, not about how to write code, not about how to build products, because if you're an expert, you already know how to do those things. They teach their experts how to work with clients. And since joining Codable in September 2016, I kid you not, I have doubled my earning potential because I now know how to work with clients better. So, I realized that the clients were not the problem, I was the problem. The three, thing, the three keys to success I learned from Codable. Key number one, money. Key number two, quality. Key number three, customer service. Now, those sound obvious. They really do. But the problem is when you get into a project, what tends to happen is that we forget about those things. We maybe focus a bit on the money. We maybe start focusing on quality. And things go wrong during a project. And the reason those things go wrong is because we haven't got a plan. So let's talk about the getting paid part first. Talking about the money. This is a, this is a quote from somebody who I, who I strongly believe in. His name is Jonathan Bossinger, and he said this in 2018. He said, the number one reason freelancers burn themselves out is because they don't charge enough. Okay? And I believe this is partly a South African thing. I think we have a tendency to not charge enough because either we don't understand what we're worth or we feel like we need to charge less than the other guy to get the project. And you don't, as far as I'm concerned. Um, all of these links are on my website, but I'm, they're not, I'm, not, I'm not putting them up so you come to my website. I, if you find them somewhere else, that's fine. But there's an article on my website, Jonathan Boston just slash rates, where I got this amazing spreadsheet from somebody who, who's also in this sort of freelancing game and organizing how you calculate your billable rate. Most of the time when freelancers cal calculate the billable rate, they look at what the sort of average prices of people charging, and then they go, well, I want to get work, so I'm going to come in just under that. And they don't think about their living costs and their laptop costs and their internet costs and how much actual work time they're going to get. So that's a good place to start. But 
it's not a good idea to charge by the hour. It's a better idea to charge by the value that you give to that project. So how much work is this really? Okay. Yesterday I was doing a workshop and things went wrong. Even though I had everything prepped up, things went wrong. This is 15 years worth of development. This is a truth, folks. There will be something that either goes wrong or that you don't know or that you didn't expect. I can guarantee it. If you tell me you've had a project that's never had that happen, it's another person I'm going to owe a beer today. Okay? Can anybody put up a hand and say there's been a project that's been perfect all the way through? Nothing, hap nothing unexpected happened. No, it's going to happen. You need to plan for it. How complex is the problem that you're solving for the client? Okay? How urgent is this to the client? How, how important is this to them? That, that is more value that you're adding to the situation. To give you an example, codable estimates are calculated based on the total scope to be completed, the complexity of the project, and the urgency. We don't, when our clients ask us, what is your hourly rate? I don't give it to them. I have my hourly rate, and I know how I work it out for the project, and my hourly rate is my actual hourly rate, plus 30% every single time. And if it's a difficult client, and I'll talk about difficult clients in a second, if those red warning bells go off, I add another 30%. Okay? It's hard, but I have to do it because I have to plan ahead. Um, there's, another, there's another estimation thing that you can use. It's called PERT estimation or three-point estimation. Uh, if you go on wikipedia.org um, and search three-point estimation, they talk about that. And it's basically, you start with the first hourly figure that you came up with in your head that you know this is how long it's going to be. Right? That's your base value. Then you go worst case scenario. Everything goes wrong. What's the worst case scenario? And usually I go three times what my base value was. Then you go perfect. Nothing's going to go wrong. And that's usually about half of my base value. You take all of those three and then you calculate an estimate. Right? That's one way of doing it. Um, from the, from the uh, CEO of Codable, he used to run an agency. His way of doing it, he takes whatever estimate of time the developers give him and he multiplies it by pi. And he said every single time, he was closer than the developer. Okay? It might not work. It's Ubuntu. It freaks out with projectors and things. Um, so that's money. Let's talk about a commitment to quality. Right? It is important that you think about the time that you're going to need to write and make quality work. If you're, gonna, if you're doing test-driven development, that's going to take time. If you're doing testing, that, who here estimates for testing time? Like, I can count those hands on my ha one hand. If you're not estimating for testing time, you're going to lose out, okay? Um, so you need to make sure that you're including that time in your project. Okay, thank you. Three minutes. Um, so basically, it boils down to a failure to plan. Things like finding your niche. Don't take projects that are so far out of your scope, you're not going to manage them because that's going to take even longer and you're losing out. Um, have a project scope. Work out with a client what their requirements are. Get it nailed down so that when they complain and say you didn't do this, you can go, here's the document, this is the document that I agreed to for this amount of money. Okay? Um, I spoke about the pie factor and estimates earlier. Sweat the small stuff. How many of you estimate for time to email back and forth? Even less. That takes time. That, that cuts into how much time you have to develop. Generally, when we work out development time for a project, we go, this is going to take me four hours. So we quote for four hours. You don't think about the two hours of email back and forth. You're losing that time. Okay? Then, test, and I don't mean test your work, I mean test your plan of working with clients. Measure, go back after every project and see how much time did I work on this project, how much time did I spend communicating with this client. Measure the project process, not just the work, to get an understanding of the next time you know what to look for. Now, I'm not knocking on customers, okay? For those of you who can't see my screenshot, I don't watch the show, but I know who King Joffrey is. And I've got a nice picture of King Joffrey, and it says the customer is the king. The customer is still king. I still believe in that. Right? I do believe in that. So it is important to build a rapport with your customer. Get to know them a little bit. Communicate with them. Understand what their needs are. Right? When you start building a rapport, what happens is you start seeing some warning bells. You start seeing how they work with you, what information they give you, how far they're willing to go with you, so that you can learn to say no if it's the wrong project or the wrong client. Okay? You can either say no, or you can increase your estimate, because you know they're going to be a difficult client. I had a, I had a situation recent, recently where I passed up on a 130,000 Rand project because the, the person that I was dealing with signed off not one, but two emails with abbreviation DFU. The D stand for, for don't, the U stand for up. I'll let you guess what the F stood for. I'm not working with that client. If that's his attitude when we go in, 
I'm not working with that client. I walked away. It's not worth it to me. Okay? And then finally, if you follow automatic, you'll know that they have a saying internally in the company that communication is oxygen for, distribu for distributed teams. I believe communication is oxygen for freelance and remote work. So communicate with your clients as much as you possibly can. Now this slide goes back to you, and I've got the three high, uh, drawn out one key to success I learned from Codable. That customer service takes time. Quality takes time. Time equals money. So make sure you are estimating properly for all the time you're going to spend, and then everybody will be happy. When you charge according to the project, not according... Sorry, when you charge according to the project, not according to your skills, everybody wins. I have never had a client come back to me and say, I love your work, but you charge too much. I've never had that happen. Okay, thank you very much. You can ask me questions later.